Hey everybody, what's up? It's your girl Different and welcome to Difference World YouTube channel. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day like me. And if not, you gotta manifest, plan, and prepare for a better one because it's surely coming to you guys. Yeah? Alright you guys, so y'all should already know how I am. I'm all action and no hesitation, so let's get right into it. Uh, this vlog is going to be dedicated to uh, a podcast interview I did back in June, uh, actually for Juneteenth around that time uh, with my boy Theron Frazier on the Let's Talk About It podcast. I had a very good time. I'm actually very excited, you guys, because this is going to be uh, uh, a part one of a two-part uh, podcast interviews that we had did. It Actually, uh, this is probably one of the longest uh, podcast interviews I had. This was about... Uh, two almost two hours that we had gotten a chance to talk and you know chop it up about my new book what if a controversial paradigm shift uh, celebration of Juneteenth and uh, our thoughts on it now becoming a federal holiday and so much more you guys so without further ado and keep you guys waiting let's hop right into it and then I'll come back on you know follow up with you guys and give you some more info on what, what's going on in Dippin's world and yeah that's how it's gonna go so here it is check it out Welcome back to another episode of Talk About with the Ron. I'm your host, the Ron Frazier. First, I would like to say to everyone, happy Juneteenth. And this week is going to be a little different. That's because I'm sitting down and talking to one by the name of Different. Different is an author, she's a business owner, and she's a motivational speaker. And she just released a new book that kind of gives you a different perspective on history, what's going on currently with injustice and racism. And she has a very interesting way of getting you to start that type of conversation, getting you to look at things differently, and getting you to kind of acknowledge what's going on in the world today. And she's going to go over that with us, talking about it in her new book. She's going to be going over her life experiences with us, things that motivated her to write the book. Her life growing up as a child, which is a different, you know, it was different than, than normal, you know, and that's why they call it different. <laughs> but, you know, this is a, this is going to be a very interesting, good conversation because she's going to give you guys some enlightenment on how to view things from a different perspective because you're putting yourself in someone else's shoes. Um, and throughout history, throughout current, you know, life and, and everything. So I hope you guys like it and I want to say thank you all for listening. Welcome back to another episode of Talk About With The Run. I'm your host, The Run Frazier, and today we're talking with Different. And she is a writer, author, motivational speaker, and so much more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let her introduce herself. Good afternoon, Different. How you doing? Hey, The Run. How are you? Thank you so much for having me on your show. So happy to talk with you. And shout out to everybody out there listening. Yes, my name is Different, spelled D-I-F-E-R-N-T. And I'm happy to talk with you guys here. So tell everybody about yourself. What What is it that you actually do? All righty. Well, tagging off what you said, you are right. I am an author. I'm a CEO of my own business, Third Eye Entertainment, LLC. And I'm also a motivational speaker. I'm delving more onto my business, Third Eye Entertainment. It is a business that strives to bring social awareness to society through our products and services in which it educates, inspires, and entertains all at once. And which force brings me here to you today on your show to talk about my new product, my new book, What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift. And I'm so excited to talk with you guys and share with you all about it and then just to, to get into, you know, what, what brought about this book and how it shaped and molded my life. And actually, getting my mental health together led to me writing this book and starting my business. So I'm excited with sharing that with you and everybody out there listening to me and how when you manifest plan for what it is in life that you want how it comes to you slowly but surely but it comes to you why third eye well um the way the business started actually it, it started behind the book <laughs> but in talking about why third eye um for me a person as a person i'm not a religious person i consider myself to be a spiritual person um i do believe in a higher power and you know the father the son and the holy spirit I also, you know, like reading about chakra healing and practice in chakra healing and meditation and um, things of that nature. And so, uh, of course, you know, part, one of the chakras is the third eye chakra. There are several chakras, but one of the chakras um, 
is third is your third eye. And for me, it's when you're in tune with your third eye, when you are like I said, being spiritually in tune for me when I pray for the spirit of discernment, asking God to show me what it is that I need to see and understand and accept what his will is. You know, he shows me that even when it's not what I what I want to see, he shows me what I need to see and have to accept. When you're able to accept the spirit of discernment is showing you, you know, you're able to get your heart and your mind in tune, and then it will follow with your third eye. So that's why I came up with, you know, third eye entertainment, you know, being in tune with your third eye, seeing what it is that you really truly feel in your heart that you're desired for it and that you're meant for it, and then manifesting, planning, and prepare for it to come to you. So third eye entertainment. <laughs> wow. That's, that's, that's deep. Um, and my other question is this, uh, why different? Is that, is that, I'm sure, I'm not sure if that's your, your, government name but. so difference in name it's, it's not it's not my given name but it is a name that everybody knows me by i've been going by it by years um over time <laughs> back in college i was going through what you call an identity crisis or you know one of those who am i what am i meant for in life and um one of the names i i, I just stuck with me was was different in this wasn't because, you know, like everybody else states, oh, I'm different. A lot of times when people say, oh, I'm different, that I'm not like the rest, I'm not like most, that's a vanity. They try to say, you know, I'm better than anybody else, so I'm not like everybody else. I'm in, a, you know, my own lane, if you will. But for me, when I say different, you know, it's to be different from what you was in your past. You know, back in the day, I wasn't the best, best myself. You know, I did a lot of, you know, wrong. I broke a lot of people the wrong way burned a lot of bridges, you know, messed up a lot of opportunities. And so over time, you know, growing and learning from my mistakes and looking back on my past and doing better than what I did before, different to me now means to be different than what you was before, which you were in your past, to be better than who you was. So when I say different, it's not a vanity, it's of humility to be different from what you was in your past, to be better than. If that makes and sense. That is different. <laughs> no, that is, that is different. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I know. Too bad they have wow. to say, oh, I'm different. I'm not like most. Yeah, that's true. I am different. I'm not like most of them. I don't like to talk about that part. With that, I tell people, come and learn what's different about me. And you will see. I don't have to brag about why I'm different and what makes me different. Just come and learn. So you are a motivational speaker, author, and all of the above. Mm -hmm. What are some of the areas you cover? Like, and we, we've talked, you know, before this, and we talked about, you know, mental health yeah. and then stuff that's going on in the community. What, what are, just give us a, a couple bullet points of some of the stuff that you cover when you. Um, alrighty. So, yeah, so with Third Eye Entertainment, um, with our products and services, like I said, we try to bring social awareness. And so, through our services and products, uh, as part of the service side, with my motivational speaking, I do like to speak on issues that are often are considered taboo or swept under the rug or people like to turn a blind eye to, such as, you know, systemic racism, uh, domestic violence issue, mental health issues. Uh, what else? We have suicide issues that you know, people don't talk about often, uh, especially within the black community. And so those are just the minute of issues that I touch on, but I talk about a range of things. Uh, with my first product that I have to offer to the product, to the excuse to the public, uh, which is what if, you know, my first book, uh, what if a controversial paradigm shift. Well, before I go any further, I must state that this book does include a disclaimer. Um, it's for grown folks only. It's, it, uh, so if you can't take this tea, don't bother coming to the kitchen. Um, it's not intended to, you know, cause any type of race wars or anything like that. This is strictly a book that's written to encourage and inform thought-provoking conversations about injustice and systemic racism in America. And it's done through provocative and graphic illustration. I've categorized them in four main paradigm shifts. We have historical, we have political, precedent, and then hypothetical. And so without going into too much of the details, each of those paradigms, I ask uh, paradigm questions in regards to those paradigms. So in historical, I ask historical questions, you know, that happened, you know, in the black community 
that are, you know, with historical events and deaths that have occurred. And I ask the questions um, basically in a race role reversal position. You know, I just, you know, flip the script. You know, the illustrations that you see, you know, they're going to be, you know, of, you know, it's not going to, it's not going to, you know, it's going to piss off white folks, I guess, just to put it plain. You know, it'll piss off a lot of white people or, or you know, a lot of people in general. But it's not meant to do it that way. It's just meant to, you know, get you to to push that envelope to have these conversations that need to be had, you know, about your injustice and systemic racism. You know, if you see an illustration, you know, of a white man being lynched by a black angry angry black mob, but then and it's not a it's it's outrage to you. But then, on the other hand, when you're looking at pictures, you know, of black people being lynched by a white mob. And, oh, it's justified. It happened in the past. Oh, that's something that we can't change. Why are you making excuses? You know, why is it okay for that to happen, but not for when it happens to, you know, the other side? And so with this book, you know, like I said, it's going to, you know, push the envelope. It's going to ruffle some feathers, but it's also going to make you think. It's going to educate you, and you're going to be entertained. And so that's also, you know, one of the things know our, our, our motto in Creek that we live by uh, to educate, inspire, and entertain all at once. So with this book, it does just that. Um, now, if you ask the question, how did this book come about? Ask me the wrong. How did the book come about? <laughs> how did a book come about? Okay, I'll tell you how. You, since you begged me, I'll tell you. <laughs> well, we have to take it back to you know um, my childhood, if you will. If you got time, let me tell you back to 1990. No, not just too far. <laughs> um, so we go back to the time I was around 11 years old. Um, I grew up with a pretty, you know, happy and steady childhood up until that time. Me and my family, we ended up homeless on the street for the next three years, living from pillow to post, um, literally sleeping everywhere from cars, parks, you know, shelters, bus stops, strangers' house, relatives, even at one point sleeping at a crack house. And um, like I said, I stayed like that for three years until uh, until the age I turned 14. And then a family member placed secretly placed me in foster care. And the rest of my family did not know where I was until after six months, me being in care. And I, between that time, I tried my hardest to come home. However, you know, by the time I found out from another foster kid that if, you know, I stayed in and aged out, they would pay for my way to college. And so right there, you know, a light bulb went out of my head. And I decided to use my street smarts to elevate my book smarts and just decided to duke out those four years in CPS. As opposed to, you know, when I got out, I graduated from Eltic High School and went to San Houston State University. And there, you know, God blessed me in so many ways. And, you know, at first I had started my own student organization, I paid for it a student organization that was tailored to catering or, excuse me, volunteering, educating, and mentoring kids that were in foster care as well as high school kids. We had a speakers team that we went to different high schools and talking with them about the importance of education. And it was there that my motivational speaking bug was born. You know, I would share my testimony with the kids. And towards the end, they would come to me and tell me, man, my story is just like yours. I'm, the, I'm in CPS right now. You know, when I get out, I'm going to go to college, too. I didn't know that either. And so um, sharing my testimony, that that just showed me, you know, people needed to hear. You know, don't be ashamed about what you went through in life because you sharing your story and your testimony, it can help and save others. And so uh, I also got the opportunity to study abroad. I had went to, you know, Kim Jong University in South Korea. And while being over there, I had went to eight other different countries, and that just, you know, sparked my travel bug. And so now I travel all over the world. Uh, I've been to just about or up to 250 countries uh, before the pandemic hit, and then I had got stuck in the house. <laughs> and wow. so, um, yeah. But and, and then ultimately, I graduated, you know, in 2013 with my bachelor's degree in international business. I had, a few years later got my master's degree in entrepreneurship. Uh, again, sometime later, I got my real estate license. And now here I am, um, CEO of my own business. I got my own book, 
and I motivate others to get out and get their own just like I'm doing mine. So, you know, that's how it goes. But with all that being said, all those accomplishments and not just under my belt, I still was battling demons. I still, you know, had issues that plagued me from my past that followed me all throughout my teenage years, through my adult years, you know, with being in that environment that I came up from, you know, being rough and tough and on the outside and uh, not letting anybody in and pushing people away and, and squandering opportunities. I had that mindset that, you know, nothing good lasts forever. And so I had got that, that notion that, you know, I was going to decide when it's time to seek the shit. I'm the captain of the ship. So I would, you know, sabotage relationships and, you know, push people away and, 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 People would just have a bad thoughts about me. They wouldn't want to, I was very awkward, if you will. And so to the point to where it started to travel into my adulthood, to where it would affect my, my career opportunities. And there was one time I had this meeting with somebody and, you know, living that, that lifestyle and that, that past and people telling me or people, you know, in the background, or in the background voices telling me, oh, you're not good enough or they just taking pity on you you know you're a foster kid or they just this that and a third and ultimately i ended up showing up late to that meeting and it left a sour taste in that person's mouth and they didn't want to deal with me afterwards so to this day i moved on from it but every once in a while i'll find myself thinking you know what if what if that what if i would have showed up and what what would what would my life be now and for years i had thought like that and it wasn't until one day i looked into the mirror and said you know what Whatever I went through in my past as a child, it wasn't my fault. It was out of my control. But as an adult right here, right now, it's on me to deal with. And I need to go fix that shit. And so with that being said, I said, bump that notion that black people don't do therapy. We don't talk about our issues coming up from that environment that, you know, what goes on in this house stays in this house. And I, I'm going to just say bump all that and I'm going to go do what I have to do to get myself some help to do what I need to do to accomplish my goals and fulfill my destiny. And so doing that, talking with my therapist and, and, and working through my issues, they helped me realize and helped me turn a negative into a positive and encouraged me to get back into what I love to do. One of the hobbies that I love doing, which was writing, and like I said, being stuck in the house and having nothing to do, I would just doodle every day and journal. And one day, May 25th, 2020 happens the day George Floyd dies. He's actually from, you know, Houston as well. I'm from Third Ward, he's from Fifth Ward. We're in the neighborhood right next to each other. And so when they were protesting and marching in his honor, of course I wanted to get involved. Of course I wanted to have my voice heard. But when it all came down to it, I couldn't do it. Not because I got cold feet, because I had to think a little bit more deeper about what it was to me, for me to get involved. Ball, I wanted my voice to be heard long after the protest was over. I wanted my voice to be heard long after I'm gone. And so, like I said, being spiritually in tune and talking with God and asking God, you know, what it is that I can do to use my talents and my gift with the world and do something to make them think that's going to make them think and grab their attention and bring people together. What is it that I can do? This is what he showed me little by little, you know, visions and and, and talking with people and watching TV and doodling in my, my journal day by day, what if, uh, what if George Floyd was a white man who was killed by a black police officer and then having that illustration to follow up with that question to make you put it in your face. You know, I've shook this book to where if the questions don't make you think, the illustrations will. It'll get you one way or another. Doing so, uh, 2020, by June, excuse me, December 2020, I finished the manuscript part of it, and then I reached out to my lawyer, had her look over it, and she asked me the question, what's the name of your business? And then, you know, that's how we got there, you know about that part. <laughs> so um, that's uh, how the, the, the book was written and or, or created, and it, it stemmed from me getting my mental health together. And, and that's how my business was born. So I say to anybody out there that's listening, you know, that's going through any type of mental anguish, please know that it's okay to not be okay, but just don't sit there and not be okay. Go get help. 
go talk with somebody, be it a therapist, a family friend, or picking up a hobby, or, you know, mending those broken relationships that need to be mended, and cutting off those people that mean you know well in your life. Go do what it is that you have to do to take back control of your life, to release yourself from that mental bondage that you're stuck in. Know, know this, no matter what it is that you're going through, whether it was your fault or you're in your control or not, it may have not been your fault, it may have not been your, in your control. Please know it's on you to deal with. It is your problem to deal with. Don't expect that person that wronged you in your past, that hurt you, don't expect for them to come back and apologize and mend your broken heart. It's on you to fix. It's on you to take back your power from that and move on and move forward with your life. It took me so many years to realize that, even though I'm, I'm only 31 now, but basically my whole 20, I wasted dwelling on the past. You know, looking back on mistakes that I made, even when you know, still making those same mistakes, knowing that I had just made that mistake and I should have learned from it. And so, but but do know, look at my life as an example. Even though you don't know me and I don't know you, look at me what it is when you can just say, hey, and admit to yourself, maybe I do need to talk with somebody about some of the things that went on in my life or some of these traits and negative characteristics that I have. I need to break these bad habits. I can't do it on my own. And and, and also being going deeper wise for those out there I'm not trying to get religious but for those who are you know spiritually to being able to you know spiritually you know break yourself from that mental bondage and and take back your control and your power from that from that from that bad guy we all know who I'm talking about but I'm not trying to get deep into it but just know that whatever it is that you guys out there are going through be it you know depression feeling suicidal dealing with bullying having financial issues, whatever, struggling with your weight, your sexuality, whatever. Just know that it's okay to not be okay, but just don't sit there and not be okay. Anybody out there that's feeling suicidal or know anybody out there that's feeling that way, please know that it is not the way, okay? If you have to, please call this number, the crisis hotline. It's 1-800-273-8255, I believe. Go, or you can go online, do your own online research, do your own homework, and find the resources that are out there and that best fits you. Do whatever it is that you got to do <laughs> to get your mental health in order. And so that's the main message that I want to bring. You know, bump promoting my business and in my book and trying to make money or whatever. It's also, it's, it's, the money's going to come to me. What I mostly care about is advocating for mental health awareness, especially in the black community. Especially because I know there's people out there that grew up like me being taught that you don't talk about what goes on in your house or basically what you're feeling on the inside. And then not sharing how it is. And so we come, we keep keeping it bottled up. It comes out a wrong way, in a negative way, in another way, in a manner that, that means you know well. And so as an adult, please know you don't have to do what you were taught as a child. Now it's on you to reprogram your mind and do what works better for you. And so talking about those issues that were hurt you in the past or what's hurting you now helps then do that. Or even picking up a hobby like me, you know, finding something to do, finding a purpose in life, finding a reason to live and keep going. I often realize a lot of the, the, the suicide thoughts stems from, you know, depression and anxiety what we, we've gone through in our past. And if we just for once talk about it with somebody, even not with somebody, talking about it to yourself, journaling or writing about it, it helps. But don't keep that bottle in. <laughs> right. that's, that's the way it leads to, you know, the road of, of you know, going off the deep end. Yep. And that's also what I saw in myself. I had to get real with myself. I said that, you know, to myself when Anthony Bourdain and, and Robin Williams, you know, you know, committed suicide, I said, Wow, they like me. They just like me. They they smiling on the outside, but then one day they just up and, and go off the deep end. And I said to myself, I don't want that to be me. I don't want to choose a selfish life. Sometimes I don't want to offend nobody, but I'm a realist, so I'm gonna tell you how it is. Sometimes the suicide route is the selfish route because we hurt a lot of pro a lot of people in the process where they leave behind. 
And so we're not thinking about, you know, the people that love and care for us and that need us and feeling, you know, in our own feelings, not trying to minimize anybody's feelings of what they're going through because I have not walked them out in nobody's shoes, only mine. But I do know whatever you're going through, suicide is not the way. And so before you get me down into that road, put a stop to it. I'm telling y'all now, I've seen, you know, how it starts. My mother, you know, God rest her soul, rest in peace to Marichelle Schinnerberg. She just passed away. She died in my arms the day after Christmas in 2021. And it's taken everything in me not to go off the deep end. And so talking about it, talking, you know, keeping her memory alive, saying her name, talking with you, even though I don't know you like that, Theron, you don't know me like that. I know there's somebody out there that's going to hear this, maybe even not now, but sometime down the road, hearing my testimony, it may help them or even save their lives. And knowing that whatever it is they're going through, they will get through. They're stronger than they think. They just have to believe it and receive this. Sometimes you got to fake it until you make it. And, and believe you me, it's hard at times. It, it, I, I, I still feel like I can still remember holding my mother in my arms as she's gasping for her last breath and me begging God to take me instead. As soon as she passed away, that urge to, to drink came on me. I don't drink at all. But that's just how that bad guy do you, that devil do you. You know, he'll come at you when you're at your lowest and your weakest. He'll try to tempt you. And I don't drink at all, but I just know that liquor numbs the pain and it takes everything in me. I live right next to a liquor store, by the way. Wow. It takes everything in me. Mother's Day was the hardest. I had to sleep all day in order to, to block it out. Wow. But it takes everything in me to, to not go off that deep. And that's when, you know, for me, that's why I have to stay spiritually in tune. I have to pray. I have to meditate. I have to do chakra healing. This is why. So, and so for me, that's what keeps me, you know, going off deep end. And like I said, talking about those, I have a therapist that I talk to, you know, through faithfully, you know, and, and just doing, having hobbies, you know, to get me through it. But I know, you know, she wouldn't want me going off the deep end and she's looking down on me right now and even listening to our conversation and you just, you know, pushing me to keep going. You know, even before she left, she told me, don't you stop living because I'm not here anymore. You keep going. Make sure that book becomes the number one bestseller, like you said. Make sure that book is the book that's going to ring the world's bell like it is. And so I'm going to do like my mama told me to do. <laughs> right. You know, keep on going on. And so that's what I want everybody out there listening and knowing, you know, especially when it comes to the mental health. We can talk about, you know, the fun and, and educating part and entertaining part about it, but the more so part about it, the real raw part about it, the social awareness part about third eye entertainment is the one talking about mental health awareness. We also, like I said, talk about other issues, but the main topic, especially in the black community, is for all people, not just black people, but especially black people getting our mental health in check that's the number one healthy thing you know we need to get in check as part of with our physical health our mental health as well our spiritual and then financial <laughs> then um, we can worry about the sexual later on being sexually right. healthy of course making sure our status but making sure our, our mental and our physical those are the main two things that are taking us off the map Third being, you know, police officers killing us, us on all black people. But the first and second one is our physical health and then our mental health. Physical, you know, a lot of us have hypertension and having heart attack and diabetes. You know, our mental, a lot of us, you know, seem fine one day and the next day you get that call, girl, you heard someone stuff kill themselves? Mm. And so let's get that in order. Let's get our houses in order. If you said a lot then, and, and some of the stuff I was taking notes as we was talking, as you was talking, and mm -hmm. um, talking about your book, and um, what if a white guy was being hanged in the black house, with, you know, with the mob watching, right? Mm -hmm. When you, next time you come to Atlanta, you should go to the Civil Rights Museum. Oh, yeah, I've been there. You've been there? Yeah, I've been it, to the, also uh, MLK's house and everything. Yeah, yeah. They, the, the Civil Rights Museum you see some stuff there and the counter when you sit at the counter and, and with the earphones on and listen to all the people call you the n-word and all that stuff in your ear 
as if you were sitting at the bar? I'm, I'm sorry. You know what? I'm thinking about it. I think I went to MLK's museum when it has like his suits and everything. Yeah, you went to the um, the Martin Luther King Museum. Okay, I'm they sorry. I went to the MLK's right museum, museum, not to the Civil one yet. Yeah. But yeah, you I should go to, check that me out. Me and my mom, we actually um, we've been to um, the African American Museum in DC. We went back in 2016 mm-hmm. when it first opened. And, man, we actually sat at the actual uh, sit-in for the Greensboro. They have the whole seat section and everything, and we sat there. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and I, want, I did want to say condolences to you, to your, for your mom. Oh, um, yeah. It's hard. Losing your, it's it's hard, hard, hard. It is mom. hard. I'm not going to lie to you, man. It's hard. I, I, but it's, it's, it's her voice in the back of my head that tells me to keep going and to get mine. It's, you know, my mom wasn't no no chump about her. She was a, a, a tough one. Um, 17 years doing dialysis, three days out of the week, you know, getting up at 4 o'clock in the morning to get poked with three to four needles in her arm. You know, that's a mighty, mighty strong woman. And, you know, I, I just, I hate to sound crazy, but I hate that she's no longer here, but I'm glad she's not suffering. And um, right. I thank God he's grateful. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm grateful to God because he's merciful. It allowed for me and my brother to be by her side, you know, when she took her last breath. And, and that's the way she wanted it. And that's the way we wanted it to make sure, you know, she wasn't alone and it gave her comfort. Although, you know, that's something I got to live with, you know, the, those, those images for the rest of my life. I'm glad I was able to give her comfort in her last moments of life with, with me being by her side. I know that gave her comfort. I lost my dad in 2010 to cancer. And, um, you know, and my brother and my sister and my mom was all by his side when he passed too. So I, I, I understand losing a parent is hard. Somebody's been there all your life. Oh yeah, man. And one thing about losing your parents, I, I, I you really some of your family members really show how they feel about you. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. But oh that's yeah. Okay. Definitely. My mama taught me Definitely. how to hold it down one deep when I had to, so I'm okay with that. But um, that's just yeah. how it goes. Life goes on, and I, she's lived her life, and you know her story is done, but mine's ain't, and you know, so I gotta make sure I live the best and do what it is and I'm supposed to do while I'm here. But one day when I get to meet her again, we gonna have so much more to talk about and share all the accomplishments that I have, you know, with her, especially with my book being number one bestseller in the world and winning the Pulitzer Prize and Nobel Peace Prize and all that. <laughs> I'm actually manifesting that this book is going to get turned into a mini series. So, like I said, with our motto, Manifest, Plan, Prepare, uh, I'm manifesting, planning, and prepare for this book to, you know, be turned into a mini series and get picked up or something. You know, touching bases on my motto, Manifest, Plan, Prepare, for that, you know, what I believe or what we believe here at Third Eye Entertainment is that for those who believe that they're, you know, meant for greatness in life and they're destined for, you know, greatness, they have to manifest, plan, prepare for it. You have to manifest. When you manifest, you got to remove all the doubt, all the fear, all the anxieties. Even if you are scared, you still got to face it head on. You have to get it in your mind. You have to envision it and never let it go anywhere. You have to start speaking into an existence. Write it out on paper. Start seeing it before you can receive it. And then once you do that, you move on to the planning. When you actually get it out on paper, how you want to achieve your goals. Have how have a, a backup plan, have an exit plan. You can't plan for the unknown, but you can expect the unexpected is going to come. And understand and try to you know know that whatever is going to happen, you're going to get through it. And that way, when you prepare for it, when you're thoroughly preparing for whatever you manifest. When I say prepare, that means getting your house in order. So therefore, going fixing your financial house. Go fix your physical house, man. Go get that. Go back and hit that gym and get your health back in order. Go get your mental house in order. Go talking with somebody. Like I said, cutting those people off that mean you know well, mending those broken bridges, you know, fixing those, whatever that's playing your life, getting that in order, preparing yourself. So whatever it is that you have manifested in life, what you manifested for, when it comes to you, you will be prepared for it. You will know how to handle it. You won't squander it like how I used to. I had a lot of great opportunities come my way, but I didn't know how to handle it. I didn't know, you know, what to do, and so I was wondering. But now I'm manifesting for what it is that I want in life, and I'm planning for it and preparing myself for it so that when it comes to me, I will know how to handle it. I won't squander it. I will be prepared for it. 
So manifest, plan, prepare for whatever it is life that you want, and then it will surely come to you. May come to you slowly, but surely it will come to you. <laughs> get into existence. Yes, sir. Right? I'm listening to your story in 2020 and the pandemic and all of that yes. brought a lot out of a lot of people. And we got some commonalities, you know, between us, you know, because the one of the reason I'm not, and when you was talking, I was like, did she read my bio or something? Because <laughs> I started podcasting because of what happened to George Floyd. Oh, wow. And my first thing was, what can I do to make a difference in our community? Mm -hmm. And my first thought was, because this was around the 2020 elections and all of that, right? Yeah. So my first thought was, I can run for office. Mm -hmm. and then I was like, well... You know, running for office, you know, what's my reach there? My community, my local community. I want to do something broad. I want to be able to, you know, have an impact somewhere else. So my wife was like, you like to talk? And I was like, yeah, I do. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, <laughs> so I was watching CNN one day and I saw Don Lemon who had just started his podcast. And I was like, well, you know what? I can, I can do a podcast. I'm going to be on I his podcast, podcast next. <laughs> So I started, I just went out and started doing podcasts. I went and bought the materials when I came back and built the studio. And I just started. I had no experience, no nothing. And my very first episode was, you can listen to the difference between then and now. You know, it was raw, you know, straight uncut. But it was a, a, a just a conversation between the father and his sons yeah. about stuff that black men need to be having, we need to be having with their sons. Mm -hmm. But then I went on to do other podcasts and some of the stuff that you're talking about, like in my, I did a podcast on mental health mm -hmm. and we talked about when in, in the black community, what happens in the house stays in the house. That's, that's every phrase you've heard. Mm -hmm. I bet you 90% of black people have said that or, or have heard that in their household. Yeah. Oh, well, man, that, I understand that, 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 that phrase. Like some things, yeah, you're right. You don't need to go tell it. But if there's something on the inside that's plaguing at you and eating away that you let that shit out. Oops, excuse me. <laughs> right. And then I did another one on um, black women and mental health. Mm -hmm. And in, in this episode, this specifically talked about suicide. Um, I, this young lady I talked to on here, man, she was dealing with something. Her best friend worked at a mental health facility. And her, her best friend was going through something that she didn't even know about. Her friend called her. She, I, I think how it went. I think she called her friend, and it was talking about you know suicide. Mm -hmm. But what she didn't know is, and she found out later, her her friend was in the process of about to kill herself. Mm -hmm. And she said, you know, she called her, and she said, "Well, no, I'm going to get you some help. So, um, we're going to take you to the facility, yeah, and we're going to sit God. you down with somebody." Thank God for that. I I, I love hearing stories like that, man, because. I, I I understand what the friend was going through, is going through. I'm not trying to say I'm I'm suicidal, but I can see how it how it happens, how it starts, if you will. And a lot of times people like to think like suicide is a is a, a long thought out process thing. No, it's not. I can see how it's one day you find it, then the next day you're thinking about something or something reminds you of something that happened to you and you just sad and you just can't get out of the stupor and you Especially if you have something accessible, easier to you to end your life, and it's right there for you, I can see how that how it happens, man. So sometimes suicide is not such a thought out long process. Sometimes being suicidal can be in that moment, in that time, of how you feel it right then and there. You just want to end it all. And so for people out there who have never been in that situation and like to judge and and and, and think, oh, it's not that serious. You never know what somebody is going. through. And until you, you, you walk them out of their shoes or you, you, you've you been on their side of the tracks. So that's why it's important to practice kindness and love to one another. No matter what we look like on the outside, you know, our financial status, our sexual orientation, let's practice love and kindness to one another because you never know what somebody is dealing with on the inside. It's been plenty of times, you know, when somebody has said something to me and I was like, man, fuck it, fuck these people, I'm, I'm done with it. But at the end of the day, I had to calm down and think about it. Look at the people, you know, who I would be hurting, what I'm leaving it all over because of what they said. In that moment in time, yes, it's rough, yes, it hurts like hell, but you will get through it. 
this too shall pass. That's what you have to tell yourself. That's what you got to remind yourself, especially if you believe in the Lord, if you believe in the higher power, if you will. You have to know that you are a child of God and you are a soldier in his army. And for you to be that, you will get through it. And so you have to tell yourself that I'm not going to take myself off this stuff. I'm going to finish this race. I'm the captain of this ship. At times, I may, you know, get a little weary and may rock the boat a little bit, but I'm still in control. No matter what, I will win. I will not lose. Even That's just some things you got to tell yourself. Even if it's not true in that moment of time, you got to fake it till you make it at times. Fool yourself. Reprogram right. your mind. So they, they say fake it till you make it. That's what you do. You reprogram your mind. You tell yourself until it happens, until it starts to happen. And so... Man, I just, I feel what, 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 what you said and what she's going through. I understand, you know, I, I, I totally understand, man. God bless her. I'm so glad she was able to get the help that she needed. I hope she's doing well. I don't know her, but I pray for her. I hope she's doing well. And that is part one of Different. I hope you guys enjoyed that conversation. We have plenty more coming where that come from in our next episode. Thank you guys for listening as you. Hey everybody, welcome back. I hope you guys enjoyed listening to uh, my podcast interview I did uh, with my boy Theron. Big shout out to him on the Let's Talk About It podcast. Uh, As you guys saw uh, how we discussed my new book, What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift, uh, we talked about, you know, the importance of Juneteenth and and what it means to the black culture, as well as, you know, what it's going to take for us as a whole in society to come together and create systemic change. Uh, that's also uh, one of the main topics that we got gotten to talk about. But again, you guys, don't forget, this was just the first part of our interview. Uh, part two will follow uh, with my next uh, vlog post in retrospect for the podcast interviews, you guys. But in any case, make sure you guys check him out. You like his YouTube channel as well as be sure to check him out on the social, excuse me, the podcast platforms that he is on. His uh, link is in my bio, so be sure to show him some love and follow him wherever he may be. And uh, again, big shout out to my boy, Theron Frazier, for having me on his show. I was so excited, you guys, you know, talking and sharing uh, with him uh, my book, What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift. Matter of fact, what is that? Hit, hit. Yo, oh, my God, you know I did. Hold on. It is right here. <laughs> What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift, again, is a book that was written to inform and encourage thought-provoking conversations about injustice and systemic racism in America. And I've done this through thought-provoking and, and graphic illustrations that are meant to, you know, stimulate your mind and push that envelope again. So remember that it's intended for a mature audience. And so if you can't take this type of heat, then don't bother coming to this kitchen. But again, and if so, uh, definitely go to my website, differenceworld.net, and get your copy of my book, What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift. Um, following up with our interview, as you guys see, you know, just having those conversations about, you know, thought-provoking or, if you will, controversial topics such as, you know, uh, the way that I've uh, I've, uh, presented my book and in the manner that I've done this. Uh, Like I said, with this book, it's basically a race world reversal. It asks the question, what if, you know, this happened to white people instead of black people? How would you guys feel then? And so in depth of our conversations, you guys saw or heard, if you will, um, we had a lot to talk about and touched on a lot of good points, uh, which we follow up in our next uh, interview that you guys will see. Uh, so be sure to stay tuned on that and don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe with this vlog here. I definitely appreciate all the love and support that I am giving. Uh, keep it coming, you guys. Like I said, interact with me and I'll interact with you guys and share your thoughts with me just like I'm sharing my thoughts with you guys. So uh, with that being said, you guys, uh, again, uh, Part two will follow after this, and this is just the first uh, uh, part of our interview, so we wasn't done with the conversation. As you guys saw, it was getting deep, and so we had to, you know, come to the stopping point for him because it, we actually, we had so much to talk about, and um, I, I truly appreciated the opportunity, man. But Ron, he was just a well-educated black man, well put together, uh, uh, just, just an example of, you know, what it is my hope and prayer that over time us uh, black community or the black community would become as a whole and so uh, uh, big shout out to my boy Theron with that one Uh, and moving on you guys talking about more of what we got going on in Difference World I have my travel vlog I'm going to drop and post as well 
before I drop the second part of um, my Let's Talk About It podcast interview. So be on the lookout for that, you guys. I know I said I was going to do a, a Cairo or Alexandria. I forget which one of the Egypt cities I, I said that I was going to post. But I'm thinking more of a European country now to share with you guys. Um, and so uh, I don't know which one yet. And so uh, just be, I don't know, I guess I'm going to surprise you guys. I don't know. Uh, but stay tuned. That's why you got to make sure you hit that subscribe and notification. And, and make sure when I post, you guys come to Difference World and you come and learn what's going on in mine. Um, so stay tuned for that, you guys. Uh, before we get out of here, you know, I always do this every single time, doing a mental health check uh, with those out there who are listening and watching me. Be sure to make sure you guys are keeping your mental health in check and doing whatever it is that you have to do to make sure you don't have don't go off the deep end. If you are, you know, suffering from any type of mental anguish, be it depression, anxiety, feeling suicidal thoughts, even dealing with bullying, uh, if you know anybody that is going through these type of situations, please give them these resources. It may very well save their lives or yours. The hot, crisis hotline number is 1-800-273-8255 or they can text 988 or they can text 741741 or it's a lot of ors I think of y'all so get ready. <laughs> you can go online to mentalhealthishealth.us or you can go to in counseling.com for those who are outside of the U.S. That is spelled E N C O N S E L I N G dot com. Um, and as well as just remember, do your own homework and find what works best for you. And always know and remember that it is okay to not be okay, but never, ever, ever don't sit there and not be okay. Go get help. Go do whatever it is that you have to do to, to keep your mental health in check, like I said, and keep yourself from not going off the deep end or taking others with you possibly okay and so with that being said once you get your mental health in check then whatever it is in life that you believe in you're destined for or, or it's meant for you you have to manifest plan and prepare for you guys and then it will surely come to you difference world come and learn out of here peace <laughs> what if what if in 1619 Africans started dealing in slave trading? The tables were turned around. What if they kidnapped millions of Englishmen, women, and children from their homeland and brought them to America on a slave ship? What if a controversial paradigm shift is a book written to inform and encourage consistent, thought-provoking conversations about injustice and systematic racism in America through graphic but provocative illustrations? What if provides a different perspective by detailing controversial deaths and events as four categorized paradigm shifts, historical, political, precedent, and hypothetical? What if? A Controversial Paradigm Shift by Author Different. Go to differenceworld.net.